Hello, Mr. Speaker. Every day I hear from people who are struggling to pay their bills, to keep a roof over their head. And instead of making sure that Canadians get the help that they need, this government has created complicated programs that are still letting people fall through the cracks. If the Prime Minister won't commit to a universal benefit, will he at least commit to removing the restrictive eligibility criteria that is leaving the most vulnerable people behind? The Honourable Prime Minister. We knew when this pandemic hit that we needed to help Canadians who were suffering from coast to coast to coast, particularly the most vulnerable. That is why we move forward rapidly with the Canada Emergency Response Benefit that has helped over 7 million individual Canadians has made a huge difference. We had to move very quickly uh, to get this money out to people, and that is exactly what we did. We also recognized that there were uh, there was going to be need to be more to do, and that's why since that moment we have continually worked on Mr. Speaker, uh, reaching out to the most vulnerable and supporting them as well. Mr. We have Speaker, more to do. The government we knew keep... that targeted elements, uh, targeted approaches was what was most. Mr. Useful. Speaker, the uh, government, Ms. Ms. Collins. The government continues to leave people behind. And I spoke to a woman in my riding who, she was homeless last year. She recently found a job and a place to live, but because she didn't make $5,000 last year when the pandemic hit, she doesn't qualify for any benefits. And she doesn't qualify, but she's one of the people who needs it the most. And I'm wondering why the prime minister doesn't think she deserves our support. The right honorable prime minister. Our focus throughout uh, this crisis has been on helping the most vulnerable, on targeted measures that will uh, lift Canadians uh, out of poverty, that will support them. Over the past five years, we've uh, lifted over a million people out of poverty in this country, and we've continued to put the most vulnerable at the heart of everything we're doing. We will continue to. We've put uh, significant investments forward to uh, charitable organizations and uh, foundations uh, that are helping the most vulnerable. At the same time, we will continue to look for more ways to help even more than the 7 million Canadians who've uh, successfully received the CERB. We recognize there's more to do, and we will continue trying to do everything we can in this uh, in this unprecedented situation. Ms. Collins. Mr. Speaker, this government is weirdly committed to eligibility criteria that results in regular people not getting the support that they need, but not so committed to criteria for corporations and billionaires who get our help. So if a company is cheating the public using mm -hmm. offshore tax havens to not pay their fair share, they should not be eligible for government bailouts or benefits. Other countries like Poland and Denmark and France have made this commitment, and if they can do it, so can we. The Prime Minister said one thing one day and another the next. So will he commit now that if a company has money in offshore tax havens, that they will not receive public funds? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. The measures we put forward are focused on helping workers who lose their jobs, regardless of the companies they work for. It is, uh, it is a shame to hear the NDP that used to be the party of workers uh, choosing to judge workers by which multinational they work for. We have moved forward with a, with a, a wage subsidy that the uh, employers are obliged to pass every single penny on to the workers. That is not help for the companies, that is help for the workers, and that has been our focus every through, uh, all the way through. Ordinary Canadians who need support because uh, they uh, are unable to work because of COVID-19. That has been our priority. That is what Canadians need right now. Mr. Speaker, course, I have one last question. I, I, I take that as a no. Fight against uh, against uh, uh, against tax avoidance and tax evasion. We spent billions uh, billion dollars to strengthen our. Mr. Speaker, capacity. could I ask my last we question? Will continue to do that. I, I'm just going to uh, pause the time for a moment and I want to remind the honourable members that we're trying to stay within committee rules which state that the length of a question and the length of an answer should be approximately the same amount of time and I just want to remind uh, our, uh, our members of that. Uh, I'll just uh, move on to I go back to uh, Ms. Collins. She has about 45 seconds left and uh, hopefully that's about uh, half and half for the question and the answer. Ms. Collins. 
Thanks so much, Mr. Speaker. My last question is about housing and homelessness. And uh, my community was facing a crisis long before the pandemic hit. And now people who are living on the streets or in parks uh, don't have the lux luxury of following public health advice and just staying home. And in Victoria, the province and the municipality have stepped up with solutions to house people, at least for the short term, in local hotels. Will the federal government respond to this immediate crisis and provide the needed investments in long-term stable housing? you right, Honourable Prime Minister, in 25 seconds or less, please. Yes, Mr. Speaker, we have moved forward with a historic national housing strategy uh, that puts $40 billion towards, uh, towards housing, working with partners. We have uh, reduced poverty by over a million people in this country, but there is more to do. Uh, we are uh, reducing homelessness by half with historic investments, uh, and we recognize that during this pandemic, there's even more to do uh, for vulnerable Canadians, and we are partnering uh, with orders of government to make sure that happens. And I thank 